Um, let's try another uh, uh, skeptical doubt. I suppose the other standard one around is various Cartesian doubts. Uh, I don't mean just the idea that we have to wipe the board clean, but that we're going to withhold our joy. If, if we can think of some possibility, if that possibility holds, then we're going to, you know, then, then we don't know, then we have to have some argument to remove the possibility. And then we get deceiving geniuses, or we get brains and vats, and so on. Now, to my knowledge, you don't talk about those, those sorts of things very much. Uh, well, my attitude towards these uh, is uh, the same as my attitude towards uh, uh, more, more commonplace uh, situations where uh, the thing isn't quite so uh, unthinkable from a, from a, 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 or a naive point of view. Um, uh, namely, uh, uh, we, I, I would think in terms of naturalistic uh, uh, plausibility. Uh, the uh, uh, what, what we know, uh, what we believe, anyway, uh, firmly believe, but always, of course, science is uh, uh, corrigible and fallible. Uh, uh, is that uh, um, it would really be a, 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 a well, an implausible uh, achievement to, uh, at this stage anyway, to rig up such a uh, such a brain, uh, and uh, so uh, I don't think that. Uh, I am one. Uh, I, I think there's the same answer to uh, same sort of answer to uh, the question of whether how, how do we know uh, that we're awake? And we have these uh, uh, these familiar uh, ordinary uh, ways of uh, being persuaded of that. I mean, the various things that we remember and uh, uh, not running into uh, surprises as uh, as the day goes on. Uh, and uh, I I wouldn't claim absolute conclusiveness of either, but then I'm not claiming absolute conclusiveness of anything in science. So your strategy is not to, not to declare these, these problems sort of somehow uh, illegitimate, meaningless, and so on. You no. treat them pretty much the same way you do the ore and the water, namely they are empirical questions. That's it. And they're straightforward empirical answers. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's very that's good. Uh, that's good. One way of hearing that reply um, is as saying it's really just massively implausible that these skeptical hypotheses obtain. So the skeptic must surely be proceeding by insisting upon some artificially high standard. I just wondered if we can try running the question again and see uh, whether this response uh, carries over. Think of the way that the uh, skeptical problem is, is raised, uh, for example, by Barry Stroud in his book, The Philosophical Significance of Skepticism, where he tries, I think, to be very naturalistic. That's to say, we observe our actual practice of talking about knowledge, and we find that there are principles there, which are perfectly good workaday principles. Yeah, everybody seems to agree that if we're actually dreaming, then um, even if we're fortunate, to come, fortunate enough to come up with true beliefs, uh, they wouldn't count as knowledge on that occasion, or wouldn't count as knowledge in virtue of being arrived at on that occasion. So it seems that dreaming is something which does count against um, knowing workaday workaday uh, propositions like I'm sitting in a chair wearing a green tie holding a clipboard and so on. So the uh, principle which is then suggested is in order to know such workaday facts I need to be able to rule out the dreaming hypothesis. And then uh, Stroud goes on um, at, by way of giving an elaboration of uh, Descartes' own argument. Once that principle has been granted that in order to know workaday empirical propositions you need to be able to rule out the dreaming hypothesis then the challenge becomes unanswerable. Because, of course, we could imagine tests for deciding whether we're dreaming or not. Um, I'd need to know that I'm sitting in front of a sleep meter and that it's appointing to awake rather than asleep. But, of course, that's put under threat by the very principle which we've granted in order to know workaday uh, propositions. You need to be able to rule out already the dreaming hypothesis. So suppose the skeptical uh, problem is put in those terms. How do you respond then? In, in general, it, whether it's a question of dreaming or uh, uh, or illusion, uh, 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 any, any sorts of, uh, of reasons for doubting our our uh, uh, scientific conclusions, that uh, it, it's it's a holistic matter of uh, uh, just pursuing our hypotheses all together or our beliefs, and uh, our, our beliefs come in various stages and uh, uh, of uh, degrees of uh, strength. And uh, uh, being uh, pre prepared uh, for uh, surprises, being less prepared for 
surprises, the greater the surprises are, naturally. Uh, and the uh, checkpoints are there in observation, and that's, those are the only checkpoints. That, and uh, um, and uh, we, we have had surprises uh, in the past. Uh, uh, the uh, dissolution of the uh, Soviet uh, Union was a good example recently. And uh, uh, we, it might, we, we might have taken it as implausible. We saw the headline, especially in some uh, uh, irresponsible tabloid. And then uh, time went on. We thought, well, to our surprise, there it is. Uh, I think that's the way it, uh, the ways it, it goes. And so I, I think perhaps the way to look at this is that uh, I'm not really answering the skeptic. I'm, uh, uh, I, I'm simply uh, uh, allowing uh, this skepticism, but that the, the skeptical doubts, the deeper they run, are the uh, correspondingly less, uh, uh, less uh, uh, plausible, less disturbing, uh, because we do proceed by the general center of gravity of our overall uh, uh, of our overall system, our overall beliefs, if we depart from the web, web example at this point. Oh, I wanted to ask you whether this is a fair statement of your uh, position on skepticism. Um, to the skeptic who says, you don't really know that uh, we're all sitting here in this room, um, because after all, there are certain logically possible hypotheses that would be inconsistent with it that you cannot preclude. Your answer is that you're not really interested in the concept of knowledge. Right. Uh, you think it's defective and used in muddled ways. Um, to the skeptic who says, you have no reason to think, you have no reason to be confident that there are people in this room because of such and such a, because of the possibility that we all might be dreaming. You answer, no, that's not the case. We do have reason because the hypothesis that we're all dreaming is scientifically implausible. Yes, exactly. That's the way I look at it. So would it be, would it be fair to um, characterize your response in this way, that although you accept um, that if you're actually um, unfortunate enough to be dreaming, that does indeed uh, rule out your gaining knowledge at that time, that you, are, you don't accept the move from that to, in order to know workaday facts, you need to be able antecedently to rule out the dreaming hypothesis. There is indeed logical space between those two claims, and it seems that you're just rejecting the move from the one to the other. Uh, well, yes, uh, uh, I, I think I should uh, uh, agree to that, uh, that uh, I'm ruling that, uh, that dream hy uh, hypothesis out in the sense that, uh, that I, I dismiss it as, as very unlikely. And I think, that's, uh, I think that's the sort of mood in which we uh, do our thinking generally. Uh, uh, the, the, uh, 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 there's, there's plenty to worry about in the way of uh, uh, things that could interfere with the... Uh, uh, with our uh, hypotheses and uh, uh, show that uh, we're, we're wrong in them. Um, and uh, we worry about the uh, likeliest ones. Would it be fair to say that uh, your answer is grounded in a kind of theory of inquiry, a theory of knowledge, what, it is, what, what honest inquiry looks like? Very good, yes. And, uh, yes. and uh, these doubts simply don't have a place in honest inquiry. Yes. Yet. And, um, yes. and to the extent that they're raised, they're dismissed almost immediately from a from uh, from from the rest of the things you know, they're just not. Uh, at some place you talk about you know that the, 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 the genuine doubt uh, questions don't demand feigned doubt, which I think is important. In some way, with feigned doubt, this is not the, this is not the sort of issue that uh, concerns yes. uh, your kind of project. Yes, uh, and I like that move to inquiry because because uh, uh, the no notion of knowledge uh, uh, does bother me uh, in that uh, uh, because because of its because of its absoluteness. And uh, I, I, I like to think rather in terms of a degree of belief. And we can, we can have a degree of uh, uh, warranted belief, which would be uh, uh, 
certainly something we're not in position to measure now, but you can imagine the measure being worked out somehow in terms of, uh, uh, of the multitude of hypotheses that would imply this thing if they were true, or would imply it anyway, whether they're true or not. Uh, but uh, uh, the, the degree to which they've been uh, more or less confirmed indirectly by direct confirmation of other hypotheses that uh, uh, follow from them, uh, we, uh, we can uh, and do make rough uh, estimates of comparative warrant without having to find it. But I don't think it's uh, indefinable. I think it's just, a, just vague I, and unsystematic. 